Every morning, when you wake up and start your day, you might think the world around you hasn't changed much since yesterday, but you'd be wrong. Every minute, new land is born. It never gives up, it never stops. Every hour, tides are remolding the earth. Before you go to sleep, a cloud of dust from the Sahara will have brought life to the Caribbean. That dust is still coming all every the time, day, every yeah. day. And while all that was happening, ice has remodeled the surface of the earth. You can feel that the glacier is alive here. A new era of science has dawned. Across the globe, scientists are in touch with what's really going on, revealing an earth that moves, breathes, shrinks, and grows, all within just 24 hours. We can understand the world around us by using incredible technology. There are no areas that we can't explore, and they give us an idea of what's happening globally every single day. Our scientists are going to help us keep a running total of those changes, hour by hour. Changes that make the Earth our home, that give us the land we live on, the food we eat, the air we breathe. Because every morning we wake up to a new dawn, a new day, and a whole new world. When geologists talk about changing landscapes, they measure their time frame in millennia. But if you live off the west coast of Italy, on the island of Stromboli, your whole world can change between breakfast and dinner. We know the danger of living on a volcano. Like all the other volcanoes, ours is like a pressure cooker. Every single noise we hear, we always turn around, but we know it's him. His big eruptions and explosions that make our house tremble. It might shake up the locals, but scientists are drawn here to witness geology that happens in real time. Wow. Wow. <laughs> As a geologist, I shouldn't really be nervous. There's still something about being so close to so much heat and energy. For geologists Chris Jackson and Giuseppe De Rosa, this is the place to study just what the inner Earth is capable of. You feel the ash raining down from that last eruption now, can't you? Yes. Gosh. <laughs> the volcano and its eruptions have different characters. Sometimes you see it and you don't really hear it. Sometimes you hear it and you don't see it. Sometimes there's black ash rising out. It has so many different characters. It feels very alive. A giant, giant eruption there. Not lots and lots of lava coming out. Huge volumes just, just being blown out the top. Second by second, hour by hour, the inner Earth is changing the face of the planet because every piece of lava is a new piece of land. It's amazing seeing these, these car-sized lava bombs being hurled out of this volcano. Magma bursting to the surface, becoming lava, becoming rock, and ultimately becoming land. You can see all down the flanks that orange glow of lava which has just been kicked out. Over the course of just 24 hours, this volcano can throw up enough lava to fill 80 Olympic-sized swimming pools. The island changes every day. You see lava on the slope, and after two days, it's gone. 
passo dopo due giorni non c'è più e ne trovo un'altra su un altro angolo. This island is constantly moving. Volcanoes build land in different ways, depending on the type of stuff that's coming out. Lots of different minerals in here, and this green color is... Yes, this is all living, yes. Basically, there are two types of lava. By reading the mineral content of the rock, you can tell what kind of lava it is. The first is runny lava. Low in a mineral called silica, it flows freely and hardens into vast rocky plateaus. It very quickly runs all the way down the sides and builds new land all the way around the edges. In Hawaii, runny lava spills straight into the ocean and turns to rock, creating an average of six square meters of new land per hour, the area of a two-bedroom apartment every day. The other kind is higher in silica, which makes it more viscous, the sticky lava. It's too sticky to even come out. Sticky lava traps volatile gases and builds land in a more explosive way. Like, you know, some of the things that are coming out right now, these bombs of lava rolling way down the sides of the volcano and building the crater itself. Over thousands of years, Stromboli has risen up out of the sea, with sticky lava tumbling down its flanks, giving it the classic volcano cone shape. But sometimes, a volcanic island can appear overnight. In 2014, the Hunga Tonga Hunga High Pei volcano sprung out of the Pacific Ocean, building 60,000 square meters per day. Right now, as you are watching this, between 10 and 20 volcanoes are erupting, spewing out molten rock that extends the planet's surface, creating new land that's shot with minerals and coated in nutrient-rich ash, yielding some of the most fertile soil on Earth. Being here on this volcano feels kind of dangerous. There's explosions, there's ash falling out of the sky. But actually, without the volcano, we wouldn't have the island on which these people live, on which they call home. You know, volcanoes like Stromboli are a really, really important part of that Earth-building process. The material red... Volcanoes may have huge destructive power, but every eruption also creates a new home for plants, for animals, and for us a story of creation that plays out every single hour. In one hour, I would have cooked a really good dinner. Run eight miles, maybe nine at a push. In just a single hour, the time it takes for most of us to get out of the house, the planet has been transformed from the inside out. It's estimated that a staggering three million cubic meters of new rock have flowed from within the Earth. That's enough to build a cone-shaped island 200 meters tall. And all within just one hour. Now imagine that the same underworld forces that built your neighborhood have the power to move it. So that when you get home from work, it's not where you left it. Sitting in the North Atlantic, this is Iceland, or rather was Iceland. By the time you watch this, it'll be a different place. It's one of the fastest changing countries on Earth, continually shaken up by volcanic forces, a geologist's dream. The, the geology is right under your feet. There are just so many things happening basically every day. Haldor Gerson specializes in geodetics, the science of the changing shape of the Earth. And in central Iceland, he's gathering evidence of how the entire country is moving. The first clue, earthquakes. In this area, there are many earthquake measuring stations or seismometers and they are sending data to our analysis center so that we can get the uh, tabs on what's happening with the earthquake activity. 
activity that makes sense once you see where they're being recorded. Here, the Earth looks like it's been pulled apart. And it is. Nearby, the North American tectonic plate meets the Eurasian plate. creating a fault line that splits Iceland in two. And it's where all the action is. The plate boundaries are the most seismically active places on Earth. And this is because where tectonic plates meet, pressure builds up in the rock. A lot of force. And eventually, <laughs> something has to give. So the green star here is a magnitude three earthquake that happened yesterday, just a few kilometers south of here. We can look at the seismic trace, 24 hour recording. And then we can see also there are some smaller ones in here. So the earth is like, it's always ticking. Earthquakes are happening all over the world at the boundaries of the tectonic plates. This area here, which is called the Ring of Fire, around the Pacific, which is the most seismically active area on Earth. There are some estimates that there are as much as 300,000 earthquakes that are happening every day. In just two hours, that's about the length of an ice hockey match. It's estimated that earthquakes across the planet release the same energy as detonating 54,000 tons of TNT. Earthquakes and volcanoes are both a symptom of the Earth's restless tectonic plates. And tectonics is all down to heat. So the plate movements that we see on the surface of the Earth, they're really the representation of cooling of the Earth. So the Earth is cooling by basically big convective movements, so as if you would have a large pot of water that is boiling, but it is moving really slowly because it's made out of rock. But the tectonic plates are removed because of, of this heat release, and that is really what is causing the earthquakes that we see. But to understand where the energy comes from that can turn rock into churning magma, you have to look inside the Earth at the heat engine that's driving everything. We have two sources of heat in the Earth, primordial heat, and that's coming from the core, white hot, six to 7,000 degrees Celsius, so similar to the surface of the sun. But outside of that region, here in the mantle and in the crust, we also have heat that's being produced by radioactive decay. Radioactive decay is when a heavy element transforms into a lighter one. A heavy element like uranium becomes lighter by emitting a particle from its atomic nucleus. As it does that, a burst of energy is released in the form of heat, and it is that heat that drives geological processes deep beneath our feet and at the Earth's surface. <laughs> Every time a heavy atom decays into a lighter one, there's another burst of energy. It's the very same process that we use to create nuclear energy. And it's everywhere. The smaller dark spots on this map are nuclear power plants. Everywhere else, radioactivity is coming from atoms decaying underground. While the radiation isn't strong enough to harm us on the surface, we're standing on a perpetual nuclear power plant that's altering the geology of the Earth every second of every day. In three hours, you could catch a trout. In three hours, the time it takes to cook a Sunday roast, the Earth has generated nuclear energy equivalent to 4,000 Hiroshima bombs. That's about one every three seconds. Tectonic plates are always on the move, surfing on super hot waves of molten rock 
And here in Iceland, they're moving fast enough to change the size of the country in a single day. Haldor Gersen can prove it, if weather permits. There's a saying in Iceland that if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. So out here, we are measuring very precisely how the uh, ground is moving with an accuracy of uh, about a couple of millimeters. And this is one point of many in the area here. So we can actually estimate how fast this whole area is moving. As tectonic plates pull apart a little each day, new land forms to fill the gap. So these stations are moving at about uh, two centimeters per year. That translates to about a 20th of a millimeter of new land that is being generated per day. But if you sum that up over the whole plate boundary in Iceland, it, it amounts to about 25 square meters per day. Which means that in a week, Iceland gains enough new land mass to build a tennis court. The daily movement of tectonic plates shapes our world. But it means living with 20 volcanic eruptions and 300,000 earthquakes each day. So you might think we'd be better without them, but you'd be wrong. While tectonics create new land, erosion is taking it away. Water, wind, ice wear away the solid parts of our world. So if it wasn't for volcanic activity creating land faster than erosion can remove it, the world would become one big ocean. In four hours... You could have a good little siesta. The world's tectonic plates have pulled far enough apart to create another 1,200 square meters of new crust an area of five tennis courts that wasn't there this morning. By just five hours into our day, it's already a different world. The inner earth has been busy. New land has emerged from the ocean. It's been ripped apart, shaken loose. All thanks to the Earth's nuclear power supply that's constantly renewing the world right under our very feet. And this is just the beginning. Once the volcanic activity of the inner Earth has built the land, other forces take over, shaping and remodeling the surface of the Earth. And there's one force that's tearing across the planet, powerful enough to change the length of a day. It's happening under your feet, right now, as you watch this, and you won't even have noticed. But clues are there if you know where to look. All the noise, and then half an hour later, it's roaring, just down here at the point. When the cattle hear the roar of the pororoca, they all leave. If you live here, it pays to fear this force. But Marcelo Alvish is leading an expedition to face it, head on. The pororoca scares me, but I'm also drawn to the fear. I don't know what I'm going to find. To understand the power of what's coming, you need to go back in time. The Babylonians kept astronomical records that allow us to compare the length of our day with theirs. And when you do, you find something strange. Every century, days are getting 1.8 milliseconds longer. Go back 350 million years, and the day was just 23 hours long. Or put it another way, the Earth 
used to spin faster. Back in the Amazon, Marcelo has made camp. And they begin a traditional ritual to prepare themselves for the ancient force that has the power to slow down the earth. The first time I saw it, it was a fantastic thing, those trees being torn down. It is the roar of the forest. It is what rips the trees out with a power you can't stop. This is a huge force. It'll change everything in an hour. This force they call Pororoca is in fact a tidal bore. A huge bulge of water that rushes into this river on extreme tides, all caused by the gravitational pull of the moon. The moon orbits around the Earth. This creates a gravitational force which pulls the Earth's water. And that creates a bulge here, and one on the other side. These are the tides. Marcelo and his expedition are here to surf the Pororoca. The best thing about surfing the Pororoca is when you finally find that dream wave. Every time we come here, we are on a hunt. Today, this river will change shape in front of their eyes, thanks to the gravitational pull of the moon. But that's not all. The force of the moon will also slow down the Earth's spin by making our planet a bit less round, a bit more like a rugby ball. This is the moon, and this is the Earth, and it's shaped like that because the oceans are pulled towards the moon. And so as Earth is spinning, this bounce is a little bit ahead of the moon. So the moon pulls on the belt and slows down the rotation of the Earth a little bit, making the day a little bit longer. And so the pull of the moon, the same force that gives us the tides, slows down the Earth. And today, we'll change the shape of this river. Now this is it. We are surfing the Pororoca that we were looking for. 